Hey guys, this is Tolkien. Welcome to Let's Play Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. I'm here with Drixie. Hey guys. Uh, and we're doing our first ever Let's Play of a board game. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. Uh, it is my face reveal. No one's waiting for your face hey, reveal. My face is um, beautiful. So we are playing the Jack the Ripper in the West End Adventures variant. Hey, uh, look, if you're not, I'm, on, I'm in a suit. <laughs> if uh, you're not familiar with uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, Consulting Detective at all, it's basically a mystery adventure game. Uh, it's basically trying to solve a murder, and it's a lot of text entries. Uh, it's no dice rolling, no cards. It's just deduction. All intuition. Uh, I swear. Which will honestly lead us running around in circles unsure what to do. We'll see how this goes. So we have a couple uh, things. We have the actual case book, which will have all the entries that we'll be going through. Uh, we'll read the first entry for that in a moment. Oh, yeah. uh, we have the uh, London directory, which basically has a series of different locations in here. Remember so, those things called yellow pages? Bam. <laughs> uh, so, for example, uh, I'm going to pull this off here, but there might be something about uh, guns i had in a previous case and you might look up where the gunsmiths are uh or and then shops. and then once you have that information that will give you a uh a directory number which you can find both on the map and also find a uh, potential entry for that location inside of the consulting book uh there is also the back of the book which has a series of uh different contacts and informants that we can contact we also have newspapers so we have the today's Times. today's newspaper which is uh this case takes place on september 19th 1898 uh but we also have september? we so we have the 19th? 19th okay 19th there and then we also have the previous two nights the previous two nights or not nights uh 16th and 13th so previous two newspapers when it's a police news and when it's a Paul mal gazette uh but for all of these the reason we get three is this is actually case uh, the third standalone case in the Jack the Ripper and West End Adventures uh, expansion, I guess, for Shall Sherlock we Holmes. Show them the box? Uh, we could. Here's uh, the box. So I will say that uh, we, uh, we are recording video for this, but this is the first time I've really done anything with video. If the video doesn't turn out well, this may just be a audio uh, experience with maybe just a single static image of the map. Let's begin. Uh, off camera here, I'm going to read through what is essentially uh, two pages of information. Uh, and story time with Tolhi. Yes, everyone loves story time because it's time for bad voice acting. Yes! So one piece of information that we should mention is in this game you do not play Sherlock Holmes. You instead play uh, a series of uh, Sherlock Holmes informants mm. who are essentially trying to solve the case before him. Uh, at the end, we will present our version of what we think happened, uh, and then Sherlock Holmes will very much trounce us with basically... Oh, that's it, not right! It, well, exactly what happened with far less leads and less places visited. Uh, but for uh, the situation or for the context of this story, we are kind of informants to Sherlock Holmes, mm. uh, led by Wiggins. All right, so... The fog covers Baker Street like a heavy shroud, turning each passerby and each cart into a strange, faded vision. We are coming up the street with Wiggins leading us. No point in hailing a cab in this pea soup. We're going as fast as any sane driver would. It looks like there's a crowd in front of Mr. Holmes' door, shouts Wiggins, with a quicken in his step. As we come closer, we distinguish four silhouettes, among them Holmes' tall and slim one, easily rec recognizable despite the fog. Ah, oh, Wiggins, happy to see you. Reinforcements have arrived. Lestrade, would you please give them a quick rundown of the situation while I finish my examination of the body? Holmes pulls out a magnifying glass out of his pocket and leans over the body lying on the doorstep of 221B Baker Street. It's a man approximately six feet tall. There is a puddle of blood near his right ear. Around the body, Dr. Watson is assisting Holmes in his observation while the policeman is watching over them. Lestrade, his hands in his pocket, is rocking himself back and forth on his heels. By the way he looks at us, it is easy, that, easy to see that he considers us more of a nuisance than a helping hand. Come on, Holmes. This is a case which concerns the police, and I won't let you and your acolytes insert themselves into our, our investigation. You've already given us a statement to the effect that you didn't know this man, you weren't expecting visitors, and that you had no cases currently underway. Holmes pays no attention to Lestrade's speech. His attention is focused on the unknown man's body. He takes his right hand and examines each of its fingers with his magnifying glass. 
Watson, could you take a look at the right side of his head and see if you can determine the origin of the hemorrhaging? Of course, Holmes. Watson kneels and slightly turns the he uh, victim's head. Look, there's a wound in his neck, says Watson. It would seem he's been stabbed. There's a This caused significant internal lesions. In the meantime, Holmes is examining the victim's other hand. His fist is closed. Holmes opens it and pries out a piece of paper. Lestrade, increasingly annoyed by the detective's attitude, crouches and snatches the paper from his hand. Remember, Holmes, this case concerns the police. Withholding evidence from us is out of the question. Lestrade begins the pap brings the cl paper close to his little rat eyes to examine it. <laughs> it's just an article cut out of uh, Friday's issue of the Paul Mail Gazette. Oh. Which I believe we have, yes, the Paul Mail Gazette. Um... The obituary announcement for Sir Wilford um, Majory Banks. You know anything about that? No, replies Holmes with a snappy voice while examining the mouth of the corpse. Then he opens the jacket to check its pockets. He pulls out a silver watch and checks to see that the time given matches uh, that of his own watch. All I know about that is what I've read in the paper. Before Lestrade is able to answer, the silence of the thick fog surrounding us is broken by the ringing of a bell. A police wagon surges from the mist, as if floating on a cloud, and stops near us. Well then, Fuller, don't just stand there. Help them load the body. Fuller and two constables who came down from the wagon grab, grab the body and load it into the vehicle, which leaves as it came. Holmes heads to his door. Come, my friends. A good cup of tea will warm our old bones frozen by the cold. I need to go back to the yard to write my report, Holmes, Lestrade, and Fur Furler walk off, quickly disappearing from our sight. Five minutes later, we're settled in the living room. Miss Hudson has brought us biscuits and tea, and at Holmes' request, stayed in our company. Holmes lights his pipe, facing the window overlooking the street, his gaze lost in the fog. After a short moment, he turns to us. I've told you many times that... It's a mistake to start coming with coming up with theories without having sufficient volume of information. We have too few facts about the gentleman who came to our door this morning. However, we have a few well-established facts. First, he was a young man, probably in his 20s. Isn't that right, Watson? Absolutely. Closer to his 20s than he was to his 30s. Secondly, his clothes were of average off-the-rack quality, outdated, but well taken care of, clean and ironed. I'd say a woman was taking care of him. Thirdly, he had dental care performed on him recently. Fourthly, he had a top grade watch, which is about, uh, uh, which is ahead by 20 minutes. No doubt to make sure he was on time for his work. And what if the watch wasn't accurate? Asked Wiggins. It is a possibility, but it was uh, wound this morning. If he had wa wanted to, he could have set it to the correct time. Moreover, his dental care leads me to believe he had a comfortable income. A person with no work pushes back that sort of in, uh, intervention. Fifthly, his work. His hands were strong, calloused, used to effort, but clean, no dust or grease, not even under the nails, which distinguishes him from the London working class. Hmm, says Watson disconcertedly. And most importantly, he was killed in front of the residence of the greatest consulting detective. <gasps> Holmes punctuates the remark with a cloud of smoke. As Lestrade was saying, it could have been a coincidence, offers Watson timidly. And the newspaper article? asks Holmes. The article found in his hand, firmly held. No, I don't think this was a coincidence. Holmes walks to Miss Hudson. Miss Hudson, have you heard or seen anything which could shed a light on this mystery? I was in the middle of cleaning the kitchen when I heard a man shout. But the time, by the time I got to the front door, this poor young man was lying on the ground. Did he say anything? He said, this isn't... Then he hiccuped before his life left his body. I came to you right away. Did you tell that to the inspector, Lestrade? He didn't ask me, Mr. <laughs> Holmes. Faithful to his habits, Lestrade doesn't look for information which could contradict his already elaborated theory. Was the young man coming to see me? Did he have something to do with the death of Major E. Banks? Maybe you could take care of that while I focus on another brain teaser. Of course, says Wiggins, for all of us. And that is the first two paragraphs. 
and that is all we so have to go on. Someone came up to Sherlock Holmes's doorstep. It's just like this isn't died in front of the caretaker, and now the police are sh- shoofering the body away, taking all the evidence besides a good watch twenty minutes early. Uh, we do Fresh have. Uh, we do have that picture of the watch. Oh, uh, that's a nice looking watch. Let me see if I can get a good shot of that. All right, uh, we'll bring it in here. We do have a uh, GoPro-esque type device. I'll put it that way. Um, it's pink. It is pink. And then we'll also record a quick video of this. So, um, it does say a Dodger Banks number one. 1897 uh and it was set 20 minutes early so i guess that does mean we know what time well 1897 uh yeah 1897 and we can tell from the newspaper uh well so which one is this one is today's 1898 so you got this last year Yes, well, for that, yeah, I guess the the date is really what we're looking at, not necessarily the exact day, but yeah. So he got that last year, so it's a year old. It's a nice watch, maybe a promotionary watch? Uh, there is also, I don't know, I don't think I can focus it in here, but there is a uh, chronometer R and F uh, labeled on the watch. Uh, could we check the directory to see if there is a watchmaker under chronometer R and F? So probably under watches. Watches, gunsmiths, booksellers, carpenters, killers. Watchmakers, uh, Charles Fushman and Company, and then Broad and Lunds. Let me see. Oh, so neither of those are of the name that we see here no that might be a company name however there's also the dental work how many dentists are there in london oh you're correct there was the dental work were you taking all these notes i was down? absolutely taking notes Tohi. okay uh thank you drixie for taking those notes. i'm a studious student uh so we would be looking under dental work so under uh there the are doctors dentistry or orthodontistry uh dentists there are only three dentists in here Okay, hmm. so he was murderized by Baker, and if he died on the steps, he must have been murdered nearby. Uh, well, th- th- I don't think it was that the dentistry was done recently. Oh, but it, no, um, Sherlock had to do that, and it was recent dental work. It was recent dental it work? It was recent, I okay, believe Okay, let's, so. let's go to that key paragraph here and reread this real quick here. Um... Um, uh, we can deduce, uh, several things. Okay. Uh, first, he was a young man in his twenties. Mm. Second, his clothes were of average off the rack quality, outdated, but well taken care of, mm-hmm. clean and ironed. I'd say that a woman was taking care of them. So there might be a significant other that we're looking for <laughs> or, or potentially, uh, a parent if he was in his early twenties, might've had his mother still cleaning his iron Being clothes. Being in eight. In the 19, 1890s. No, uh, maybe not. Probably not. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? Uh, thirdly, he had dental work performed on him recently. Yeah, you got recently. Uh, fourthly, he had a top grade watch, which was ahead by 20 minutes. So the actual time on this watch is nine, approximately nine, 18, nine, 18, 30 or so. Okay. Uh, so if it was 20 minutes ahead... And he was found relatively quickly. He was found around nine. Yeah. Nine in the morning at his... I don't think they actually list a time, but that may be important that he was found at Holmes' uh, doorstep at nine in the morning. Before work hours. Well, we don't know what work... Work could have been six, eight. Who knows what his job well, would have been. you're not wrong there. And we, like, again, what would work hours have been in the 18th or 19th century? Or 18th century? 18th century. Man, I wish we were the farmer. That'd be easier. Whenever the the crow goes, ah! uh, so you're right. <laughs> so so we do have <laughs> bad roosters. So let's let's put this to one side. Um, we have a couple things. We have the watchmakers, uh, and we have the dentists. I think those are two solid leads. 
Now, I think it, we should find out where we're located, though. Would there have been... Where are Ooh, we standing in the what world if, of London? What if, the, uh, what if the watch, the name on that watch, what if that is actually the company he works for? It could have been a company... No, because it's chronometer. What does that mean? Oh, it says Dodger Bank number one. Maybe Dodger Bank. Maybe he, that's where he worked. Maybe. Is there a Banks? Dodger Banks? There's Banks. There are Banks. And then under the Banks section, Bank of England, Capital and Country, City, Serban, Continental, Coox. Uh, no, no, there's no, no, no Dodger. Dodger. I mean, we have this directory to use at our disposal, so I don't think there's anything that says that you can't just, like, skim through this. So yeah. we could skim through and see if anything rings a bell for Dodger or for... Dodger Docs? No. That would be cool, though. Oh, we could look up Dodger Banks as well in the directory to see if that name exists. That's it for the banks there. Bar of Gold Pub. Hmm. I mean, we could just start hitting up dentists and watchmakers... Uh, and see, like, canvassing the area. So we're at 42 and W currently. You want to uh, introduce our pawn? Uh, so we do have a, uh, a figure, a, a little man, uh, that uh, Drixie painted. Uh, and he will be our stand-in for us. He looks like a vagabond uh, investigator of some sorts. He's always pointing and accusing people. Yes. 42 up here. There's 41, there's 40, there's 42. This is where we are right now. Okay, so we are there. Uh, is the dentistry Nearby? near? No, because uh, that will be where he lives. Why was he over there? So there, there is a uh, 93 northwest. Northwest. Oh, it is over here. 93. One of the dentists is. 90, oh, 92. 90. 93. Aha, found it. So 93 is just down the street it from... Is. We are here, and 93 is there. So, I mean, we could just see if there's a dentistry there. It's just down the street from us. Mm -hmm. So, quickly on how scoring works. Uh, basically, each time you uh, take a lead and look up a location in this book, you get minus points. I think it's like minus 10 or something, and we can figure it out later. But basically, the more leads you go to, the worse score you get. Uh, and when you end up seeing Sherlock Holmes's answer, he'll have gone to like four locations and figured out so many stupid things based on those four locations. So and he solves everything, whereas we'll probably go to like 20 or 30 locations to get like a negative 60 it's score. It's true, because we could do all sorts of things. We could go on the watch, we can go on the clothing, go on the dental. So let's... Uh, see, I wish that we had the watch. Like The watch seems very important. Well, it, if nothing else, it could give us an identity, although I do keep thinking about the fact oh, that this... Oh, we haven't this... read the obituary yet. Oh, we haven't read any of the newspapers. May I? Okay. <coughs> Good evening. Are you going to read the entirety of the newspaper? Um. Or are you just going to read the, the obituary? No, no, I'm reading the obituary. Okay. Uh, okay, so so the big thing I have to remember here is that part of this game is going to just be reading a lot of newspapers. So I may just peruse some of this stuff, and if we don't, we might do some cutting around as we gain information. Oh, was Edward there... Major Banks. I feel like in one of the other newspapers there was a mention Major of a Banks. watch. Yes. The Carlton Club might know him. Um... So just going to scatter information on here, but if we look here, so this is the newspaper from... Is that the from, same watch? So this is the newspaper from the 13th, the first case. Uh, so this is uh, from like days several ago. days ago, but this is Walter's Watches, uh, and that looks to be the same watch. It looks very similar. It does. Now, I think the name is different. This one says, Walter Watch are noted for their consistent accuracy, their scientific construction, and their proven reliability. If, you're, if your jeweler does not stock Walter Watches, write us and learn where to obtain them. So that sounds like definitely a high-quality watch that someone that would be concerned about time would use. Potentially. Interesting. That does look like a similar watch. So was Walter's Watches... 
uh, in the uh, directory. Was that one of the watchmakers? It was not. Really? Yeah, Walter's watches were not one. So, it said here, um, shop companies will hold it, though. Your watch companies will hold it. Will hold jewelers it. will hold it. So, go to jewelers. Maybe you uh, gotta go find a jeweler. And find who engraved his with the insignia he has. There's nothing here that looks like that. Um, I'm just going to double check the name again. Chronometer R and F. Rollins and Fraser, 40 High Street, NW. So oh, that's close. So there's a Roland and Fraser's, uh, which is, if you look at the watch name, the watch name says Chrono and R and F. I, th I think cr uh, Cronin R and F might actually stand for Roland and Fraser. I want to go there. Let's let's yeah, get this yeah. ball rolling. All right, okay, so we're going to... Okay, 40 High Street NW. That's, that's close because we're in NW, so it's 40. Yes, so we are currently here, and 40 is... Where is... 40 is just down the street. So, okay, he must live here because we were here. Yeah. Watches, and then he... Well, let's find out if... was here. Let's find out if the watchmaker is the same watchmaker. So now we flip open here. We go we're following to... following our first lead, guys. Uh, I'm not going to show all this in case some people stop and read. Uh, but we're going to open and go to 40NF. Ooh, there is an entry. So uh, it's a good lead. So we, so you do need to keep track on a separate page somewhere every time we go somewhere because we are allowed to go back and reread any of the places we've gone and then also for scoring, keeping track of uh, where, like, all the places we went so that we know how many score to minus. All right, so, yes, we should have a record if the watch was engraved. Do you know when it was purchased? Uh, Mr. Fraser is a man in the prime of his years, splendid and refined. His head is crowned with brown, thick, permed hair. As we permed. wait, uh, P E R M E D. That is permed. Yep. As we wait until he's seen all his clients, he gives us his full attention. Mm. Uh, probably last year. The engraving indicates 1897. Very well, sir. I'll start with the period preceding the new year. This watch is one of the most popular models. It combines careful work with modest price. He continues his automatic sales pitch, all while looking into his carefully labeled files. The receipts from last year. Ah, there it is. Dodger Banks, number one, 1897. We engraved two and six others numbered two, three, and four in pairs. In pairs? He's visibly quite proud of his filing system, which allows him to find the needed information in less than 10 minutes. Very impressive, Mr. Fraser. Do you know the names and the address of the buyers? I have both. The watches were obtained by Solomon per, uh, Perkovich, 16th Pension Place, SE. I remember he told me he was ordering them for his darts club, a sort of fashionable sport, I believe. Thank you for your precious help, Mr. Fraser. <gasps> the pleasure is mine. The pleasure is mine, young man. The Carlton? Yes, his supper club that he was socialized at because he didn't have much of a social life. Or oh, are you talking about from the obituary? From the obituary. The Carlton Club. Uh. Wait, was it bought by... Dodger Banks? No, Sorry. it was bought by Solomon Perkovich, but he said he was buying it for his club mates. So he, this man could be a club banks, or could be a friend of Major E. Banks. He could have been. So we now have two things. We can either go talk to the man who bought the watch, mm -hmm. um, which may not give us as much as you seem to have already found another connection, which I... I the Carlton Club could have the Dark Club. The Dark Club. And the Dark Club seems like a good way to go because these people would know him and know if he had any enemies. Okay, well, let's start with uh, Solomon and see where he ends up okay. in the, the thing. There is no imagery or anything else in this it entry. Is it is just text. a... Although I do notice one down below that's just two lines. We don't want to go there. Um, I'm a cheater. Well, I, I didn't read it. I just saw a two-liner, so... So we're I didn't also I didn't also see the the location number. It's just funny because when you see two liners, it's just like you're gonna get there and it's gonna be like, nope, don't know what you're talking about. And it's like Sorry great, about that. great, 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 fantastic lead. Uh, so Solomon, 
what was the full name? Did you write it down? Uh, Solomon I Persevici. I couldn't per I couldn't spell uh, as you were saying. Forty N W if you want to get the real name or the actual full Thank you. proper while I try and track it down. Forty N W I am not the greatest pronouncer. People who are longtime survivors, uh, survivors, s- subscribers will Survi- know that. Survivors, subscribers, same difference. Uh, 16, where is that? Sorry, I just saw it. 16 SE. Two. Oh, I see. Dodger Bank number one was engraved twice. And then two number two, two number three, two number fours. Weird. Uh, oh, Perk. Govinch. Yes. Sounds Russian. It does. Uh, so 1668, or 1668, 16SE is, place. is where he resides. There's 14, 15, 16 must be nearby. Right here. The Great Highland Midland Hotel. Oh, interesting. He lives in a hotel. He must. Now, you said that there was another place in the obituary, though. Sir Wilford Majory Banks was found dead yesterday of a heart attack in the apartments of the Cosmopolitan Hotel. So we can either follow up Solomon or we can follow up there. But they're both hotels, so either one could have been the dark club that he was referring to. Um, All right, so we have a couple more leads. We still have the dental work that we could go look at dentistries. He had records of him. But I don't know how much more he would have of him. Like, how close does it would he be to his dentist and i keep coming back to the actual case name which maybe we shouldn't run so much on that but it is a case of mistaken identity what's going to be better for identifying someone the watch or their dental work i feel like way to go detective well i'm just saying no you're completely right so a watch can be stolen yeah but the dental work is probably a better way to go so we should try and how can you trick a group of dart mates trick if you were had a mistaken identity, or maybe he became well, we friends don't know, with them. We, we don't know what the title means. I'm just re- maybe reading too much into it. But You like to break things. I do like to break things. I like to break board games. Um, but it's kind of really, really good for They give you information. Thing. You use the information. You use it's the all name the information. Of, it's the title if of the Holmes thing. Holmes has taught us anything so far. It's to use the meta information. Use all of the information. I feel like we should check out the dentists, but we have nothing to go on. Well, well, we do know that the watch was bought in the same area, so he could be local. He might live up there. Oh, although, no, it was, wasn't bought by him. It was bought by Solomon, so... And Solomon's down here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So Solomon went all the way over there to get a watch? Well, I mean, they, they were in the newspaper. Maybe he saw the advertisements. Advertisements do work. Advertisements do work. This is evidence. Uh, so... So, yeah, maybe he... I mean, if he died on the doorstep of over here, 42 Baker Street, like, he has to be close. Maybe. I mean, we could start there. Or at least he works We somewhere. could go to all three dentists, basically. We could hit each one up. But This one makes the most sense. The one closest. Okay. You want, we want to hit up that dentistry? I think uh, so, unless we're finding any evidence about where he resided. There's also all the stuff in the newspapers. I mean, like, we haven't read through uh, today's mail at all, but, like, the Times for the Monday the 19th, we have all the previous newspapers as well. Although I think we found the watch thing in the obituary from those other two. There may not be a lot more information in there. But yeah, I think we just kind of nailed that one pretty good. It's funny because I feel like the video recording of this actually kind of destroys a little bit of the actual experience for me because I think part of the like I feel a little rush to like just get the content to be like okay let's get to the next thing. The big thing is we can edit all this. It isn't a live stream. We can kind of I can edit all this down but I need to remember that we should just read the newspapers. You know this game is supposed to be a calm relaxing like oh let's just peruse through this maybe make a cup of tea and like you know sip it quietly maybe play the violin for a little while relax with my violin you know mm, yes fiddle mm. for me yes mm. Mm, where's my pipe jimmy i don't think jimmy. Jim, i don't think jimmy. Jim, i don't think jimmy's where's my a, pipe jimmy i don't think that's the sherlock holmes character <laughs> Jimmy, uh, right. there is an article about the smoke. We did know about the fog and the smoke. Well, fog and smoke, would those be considered the same thing? Probably not. Smoke no, is different. No, fog is just England. Fog well, is Well, at least it's Sherlock London. Holmes setting. It's very foggy. 
There's a um, advertising for improved self-propelling and self-adjustable wheelchairs. Ooh, ooh, ooh! There's what a message it? for a friend in here. What is it saying? Uh, it is a it, it is a code. Oh. It is a jarbled code of information. Um. Oh, that's interesting. That may not even be involved in this case, as we've seen. Sometimes things or pieces of information move forward, but that does look rather suspicious. I don't I definitely don't think it's for us, because I mean, he he didn't know he was gonna get murdered. He couldn't put a message out. Well, I mean, that should be a fairly easy cipher to crack, though. It might be numbers because the basic code of letters being numbers, right? Or numbers being letters. Well, I mean, like, here we have uh, FSW, uh, which is three letters, so that usually, I'd like, that's a three-letter word, so was would be a good case. There's also AP here and IC, which is two two-letter words. Is and it, chances are. Yeah. So based on that, we could start to elaborate. Like, the S is probably going to be a vowel of some kind. However, we don't have any evidence that that's part of our case yet. No, but I want to crack the code. No, Tolhi. Uh, I want to crack the code. Tolhi. We're not cracking a code. All right, so let's go explore the dentist. Do you want to just make a wild guess there then? Um, I don't think it'd be a very wild guess. We can probably get information about um, his job because he'd have to pay. Well, we don't know which dentist to go look for though. That's the problem. Because for each lead we go to, we get minus points. We're not counting points here. We're just trying to figure this out. Okay. So you don't let's care about the max. score. You just want to... I kind of want to get the correct answer. I know, you know... There's a point. Okay. Okay. Well... Okay. Oh. So look up the dentists no, for me. No, I'm not sure. Tohi. No, it's fine. Like, if you want... Like, when I've played this before, I basically... In one of the previous cases I went through, I basically read every single one of these entries. And I still got, like all the questions right basically so still ended up with like 20 points or something okay so we're gonna just we're gonna look it up all right i guess so i'm fine with that i'm fine just finding the story so we're, let's we're look in up. nw yeah so there was another nw in there uh 93 nw 93 nw 93 there is no nw 93 oh cold case well no so i so i just gonna double NW93. check so so the one thing i'm just flipping through the rule book and there's still this thing and i i i'm not entirely yeah. sure but i'm not sure if you count entries that don't have i don't know if you count things that don't have entries i'll make a note of that in here so that's a star and we can have like t hardcore score and friendlier score we can do co-op game score yeah, whereas I because it just says for each lead you followed, but technically that wasn't a lead. It just ended up being a thing that wasn't in the book. It was totally a lead. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm not sure. The other two so let's just look at both of them. Uh, there is no WC sixty four. What's the other one? Uh, twenty three. There is no WC twenty three. So he didn't go to any dentists. Uh, it would seem not. Unless we messed something up there, but I don't think we did. He didn't go to any of the dentists in the uh, in the directory. Either that, or the watchkeeper had better records than the dentists. Well, I, I would think. Th well, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe we went there. Maybe the impl implication is we went to the dentists, but they weren't willing to give us any information. It's possible. Privacy, privacy control. So I I want to I want to say that that was probably my fault then is that I'm so meta gamey that I totally went down a leads trail that we didn't need to go down. He's overthinking things. Ah, uh, welcome to Tully. Well, the watch was probably the right lead to go. We got that big chunk of information about like a, a fair amount of information about yeah. that lead. So do you want to go try Solomon or do you want to go? Maybe we could just go see Solomon. Let's go see Solomon. Let me know probably where he works. And that was sixteen. Uh, the great... S-E. S -E. Midland Hotel. Solomon Perkovich is a tall and slimber man who must be barely in his 30s. His long hazelnut hair is impeccably curled up to around his ears. Perkovich, he shakes each of our hands in turn and leads us com to comfortable seats. His long, slim fingers held a, a vigorous grip. What can I do for you, gentlemen? You ordered a set of engraved watches for Rollins and from Rollins and Fraser last year. We're trying to find the identity of the owner of one of these watches. 
I'm a bit bewildered by your question, Solomon, uh, eyebrows raised, reflecting the young man's state of mind. A man who owned one of these watches was found dead this morning in Baker Street, says w Willing, uh, Wiggins abruptly. We're trying to figure out who it was. Good lord, not one of my partners. What did he look like? About six feet in his twenties, light chestnut hair, clean shaven, no specific distinguishing features. Hmm, clean shaven, you say? That sounds like John DeMont. John DeMont. Solomon shakes his head. He continues with a weaker voice. That's terrible. Why would anyone want to kill DeMont? That's what we're trying to discover. We think that you could help us. John is a friendly boy. He's been in our dark club since its creation about a year ago. Do you play darts? Absolutely. Every Sunday. <laughs> no, I've seen a few people play, but I've never tried it myself. It's a wonderful game. Quite simple. We're playing tonight at the White Hart. The pub White in Wal Heart. Uh, the pub in Walnut Tree. Drop by to see us if you feel like it. Thank you. I might drop by. Maybe one of your teammates would have information uh, which could be of help for us. I'm sure they'll be very cooperative. But I still can't believe. His voice trails off. Do you know Dermont's address? His place of employment? Yes, of course. He works... Uh, worked at... Bethlehem Asylum. Oh. He lives with his mother. Let's see. Uh, uh, Solomon examines a stack of papers on his desk while answering Wiggins. Ah, here. Here we go. 42 Cheney Street, WC. Thank you for your help. With pleasure. I hope you catch wow. the miscreant who committed the crime and don't hesitate to throw him, uh, throw some darts with us sometime. I was hoping it was going to say darts at him. I, I, well, that's where I was going with my reading until I realized it's not what it said. Tohi, I'm sorry I laughed at you. You were right. He does live with his mom. I, yeah. I, yeah. He probably was... starched his socks. You know, they ironed their socks back then. My own grandmother ironed her socks. Okay, well, now we have... I never understood. I did. Okay, so I... <laughs> Moving on, yeah. uh, we have several leads, it seems like. We have his place of employment, yep. and we have his home address. The asylum. Strong hands. He might have made a lot of enemies. What? Did London and his time have death row? Well, no, but the asylum, does it make sense for, like, Holding callous hands? Th that doesn't callous your hands, does it? Have you ever fought a struggling person? No. Have you? I'd like to say no, but I can imagine. Okay. In my head, I have a couple okay. of times. Okay. Well, this conversation has gone awry. So, <laughs> uh, no, I have not. I, you know, it's weird because I don't feel like that makes sense to me because. Strong, good career. I feel like the calloused fingers is a red flag for me with the asylum work, but we could go there and find out. And darts wouldn't give you calluses. No. I, but he, again, it wasn't a, a work that would leave your hands dirty either. So I no. can't think of a lot of, like, I can't off the top of my head think of many jobs that leave you calloused but with clean hands. No, exactly, right? No, there's something in the asylum that does, calluses aren't too hard to get. Honestly, it could even be guitar. No, that doesn't callous your hands. Rock climbing? I don't know. I don't know if those things existed in this time period. Wall climbing? They have walls. I'm, I'm not arguing that they don't have walls. <laughs> I'm not, they definitely didn't have parkour. They totally had parkour. They did not have parkour. Okay, so where are we now? So we were we were just over here. We, were so over we, there. we went to the homes, then we went to the watchmaker, and then we traveled across town, and we went to Solomon's. The Should distance traveled doesn't notes? matter, but no, we don't okay. need post. Well, we could do post-it notes. Okay. I, again, I don't think any of this is going to be readable from this distance. Also, sorry but for my hand nice in the camera. But it's nice and easy now but if I do like this for everybody to read. Okay, well, you work on that while I debate. Uh, so we know his name. We know his place of residence. We know where he lives or his, his work. I just, I fear that maybe all of this is just like the wrong way. It's home. Oh, is that his home? We haven't gone there yet. Okay, good. I mean, we could go... So, we have a split right now. We can either go to his house or we can go to oh, the asylum. Oh, wow. It's the biggest thing right there. Okay. So, there's the deceased work. What other one should I mark? Uh, you, you could watch them mark the... Murder site? The murder site and the where we found the watch if you wanted as well. 
I think the the watch now is a dead end. I think we got all the information out of there we could. Okay. Well, we don't have to mark it then. You're right. Keep things only that we need to know. Yeah. Um, you're right. All the information we got from the watch led us to Solomon. Solomon's the one where we got most of the good information. Although there's still stuff about the fact that there was duplicates of each watch. So it's... So one one two two three three four four. Yeah. Oh, um... Hmm. The club. White Heart Walnut Tree. White Heart. I believe that was the name of the... Oh, that's true. We could go there instead. Because there's no we, we sense of time here. We did get invited for darts tonight. We could go talk to the other people that... Yeah. Oh, just outside of his work. Literally just outside of his work. No wonder why him and Solomon are friends. Well, yeah. Solomon's really, really close to the pub. And his work. He lives all the way over here. Okay. I want to go to to the mother first. Okay, let's go see mom. Uh, which is in s West Center. West Center 42. We've barely finished knocking at the door when a corpulent and maternal woman opens it. Yes, what can I do for you? Is this John DeMont's place of residence? Yes, you know Johnny. There's worry in her voice. Are you his mother? Yes, she says as she invites us into her modest but well taken care of apartment. When did you see him for the last time? This morning. He didn't even take the time to have breakfast. He was in a hurry. He said he, that he had decided to, that he had to go and see someone. Is he all right? I'm sorry for bringing you this terrible news, Mr. Mont, says Wiggins. We think that your son is dead. No, not my Johnny! Dolores de Mont collapses on her chair. Her face breaks down and turns into a mask of tears and sorrows. We give her a moment of silence, respite before starting to question her again. The police need to know. The police need you to take care of the routine identification. I know it's hard for you, but it might help us find his killer. Killer? My son was killed? She asks in a sob. Yes. I don't understand. We led a quiet life. Who would want to kill him? We were hoping you could tell us more about that. You've told us he had to... He said he needed to see someone this morning. Do you know who? Mr. Mott had found enough of her con to think about our question. I don't know. I think it had to do with his work. Where does he work? At the Bethlehem Asylum. He was looking at an article from the newspaper and saying that he had to talk about it. What was the article about? I'm afraid I won't. I wouldn't be able to tell you, young man. I've never learned how to read, and neither did John. I didn't understand what he saw on that piece of paper. Where is he now? He's at St. Bart's. Thank you for speaking with us. If you have more information that comes to mind, you can contact me at this address said Wiggins, holding, while ha handing her card, while handing her his card. We leave her to her sorrow. That so was heavy. It was. I also had a real epiphany moment, a real Sherlock Holmes mind palace <gasps> deduction moment. Yes. Uh, it's real sad. Uh, I realize this is a question of identity. I've been reading that title as a question of mistaken identity this whole time, because mm. that's the, the, a question of mi mistaken I, I don't know that's just what I was reading and I was metagaming this whole thing around this idea of a mistaken identity oh my gosh but it, it's just trying to figure out who this person it is it was just trying to per figure out who this person was so wait he saw something in, in the, the obituary but he couldn't read so it must be a photo so it wasn't on the 19th this is after no, he's deceased it was that one that one there the 16th this is the one before this face. What is that article about? Rodolfo Leopis, the great Spanish bandit responsible for the bankruptcy of the European banks. The troubles reported in these pages of the Credit General de Paris and the Nouveau Bank of Madrid are due to the Machiavian plan conceived of and executed by a continental underworld organization. This plan of internal reach, each consists of looting the gold reserves of the banks, has come to the mind of Rodolfo Leopis, a Spanish criminal who is wanted by the police on both sides of the channel. Leopis has a thick police file in Spain and is known to be the acquaintance of other criminals in Europe, notably in France. The Spanish authorities believe that Leopis has left the country, but has given no clarification to his possible location. The French authorities are also searching for him and have announced their desire to extradite them if he's ever captured. 
what if this guy is in the asylum or part of his dork club? Potentially? What, was there any more information? I feel like that he... Was, that was it here, but oh. he wouldn't have been able to read this, right? And I don't think he'd get excited about a wheelchair advertising. No, no. Well, and it, it's on the opposite side of the obituary, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. exact, exact opposite. So maybe it wasn't so much the obituary page. We were looking at this guy. Yeah. So is there anything that we could go off of with that guy then? Like, well, like, like, is there any leads we could take from that? No. No, um, it's all about him being, leaving Spain, leaving the Fran Spanish authorities and the French authorities are coming after him or looking for him. Um, he has a plan to loot the reserves of gold and banks, but if he could not read, he wouldn't know any of this, but he would recognize his face. Right. Right. Okay. So... Huh. I Why would he react so? Because so, maybe he was trying to meet him in the morning. No, no, no. He was trying to bring the this to the attention of Holmes. Right. Because he, he, he was going to Holmes' house. That's the murder site, right? So he was going to tell Holmes that he knew where this gentleman was. Why would he go to Holmes and not the authorities? Because Holmes is cooler. Okay, fair. This just got deep. Well, it didn't get deep. I think we just learned to flip a piece of paper over. But still. <laughs> um, you know what? You know what? You're right. I mean, we could have we could have figured that out a while ago, but we had no reason to believe that it had to be that we, outside the box. Un, until until we learned he didn't have he couldn't read. Then it was like, well, what was he looking at then? But yeah, we could have probably. This is going to be see. This is the example of Sherlock Holmes is not going to have done any of these leads. He's going to have turned the paper over and looked at the other side. Because what what did he tell Lestrade? Like, what happened in that situation? Withholding him, Lestrade brings the paper close to his little ratty eyes to examine it. And he said, oh, and Lestrade looked at it going, oh, it's just an obituary. Holmes didn't read that it was an obituary. He just held it up and was like, oh, it's the picture of, uh, it's, it's the obituary. Holmes would have saw the thing on the back. You're completely right. And we both know and... He hinted that a guy never finds the information he's looking for. Well, yeah, he says he never looks outside the, the periphery of what it, like, doesn't fall under his... Periphery being, I'm or, looking at one side of the well, paper, no, no, not no, the, the other. The, I'm paraphrasing. I, he, he said... Um, Faithful to his habit, Lestrade does not look for information which con contradict his already elaborated theory. That's what he said. I'm swimming in the flames! No, do, Shoo. Shoo. And uh, Tohi. Just gonna take that away from me. No, I want my Tohi toy. Uh, okay, so then... Um, Poor mom. We had to tell her her son might be dead. Uh, yeah, I have a feeling that when we read the actual Sherlock Holmes solution for this, it's gonna be that... He didn't do any of this. He just immediately went to whatever the lead is supposed to be for that... Uh, that face. That face. But there's nothing really there. I'd like... Is there anything we could go look at? I guess the next logical conclusion the would bank? be... To, well, to go to his house or to go to his work because his work might be where he... Yeah. I still think that guy might be a member of his dark club. I think you're right. It's either of the two. It's either his work or... If it's if in his work, he's already surrounded by professionals locked up. Unless he's working at the asylum. But I don't think so. No, unless he committed himself to the asylum. I would think that the reason would be he committed himself as an insane person, uh, you know, for evaluation or whatever, which gets him off the streets. Yes, but then the authorities would be alerted because his name's in the system. Not if he checked himself in as a random person. Hmm... So where are we going to head? Are we going to go throw some darts? Or are we going to go look at some crazies? 
Well, again, we still haven't really read through this paper at all. Or anything ooh, about ooh, underground ooh. organizations. A patient escapes from Bethlehem. A management of Bethlehem Asylum has reported to the police uh, the uh, breakout of one of its patients, Irving Norvak, during the early hours of the morning last Friday. Novak is a young man, 22 years old, calm, slim, with brown hair. The last time he was seen, he was wearing white clothes of the asylum. He is not considered to be dangerous. Whoever has information about him is to ask to contact Lamforth Road Police, Station 53SE. How did you spell his name there? Uh, Irving no Novak. Okay, no, not even close to this. No, but if he was under a mistaken or under a false name to hide, maybe oh. that. Oh, but he's already gone then. He already, but this was last Friday, and this paper is from Monday, which means he escaped Monday, or he escaped three days ago. When was that paper from? Friday the sixteenth. Oh. So that's in the, that ju he just got free. Yeah, it wouldn't make it. Timeline doesn't line up. So uh, somebody escaped. No, it does. He escaped underneath a false alibi. And then this guy saw him in the paper and was running to tell Holmes. Maybe? Because he'd already escaped. Maybe he didn't know that he was dangerous. Like, does this look like danger? It's the only face on there. Usually that would be a warning sign, wouldn't it? Like, who other, what other faces we have on here? Oh, man. See, yeah, we could have skipped a bunch of stuff. Why? Yeah, uh, we didn't read some. Of, like, we, we kind of just went. But here, a new association has been found to host tournaments of the increasingly popular sport. Anyone invest in, interested in joining the Dodger Banks team at the White Hart Pub, 55 Walnut Street, SE, this Tuesday, September 20th at 8 o'clock, or contact Mr. Solomon, 16 Pension Street, SE. Um, Literally everything we just figured out. Yeah, was in the darts category right here as well. So we didn't have to go to the watchmaker. Would we have known that unless we went, though? No. Well, maybe, but it says Dodger Banks. I feel like we could have made, oh, the, call we could have of, made the call of, yeah. of maybe we should go there rather than... Skip around. Yeah, so we probably should have read through this I mean, newspaper a little closer. I mean, we still would have gone to Solomon. We still would have gone to Whiteheart. Like, we would. It's just whether or not we would have done it in as many as many steps. Told you we're not counting steps here. I, we're not. It's the scoring home. system. We're not worrying about the score, Tolhi. We're just having fun. Uh huh. You're uh, not going to beat Holmes. You can I never know. beat Holmes. But I should have read this newspaper more closely. Oh gosh. Okay, so. Cue dramatic reading music. I just don't want to read through the entire thing on camera right now. All right, so we're left with the same things, though. Basically, we can either... So the other option is we could go talk to the police at 53SE uh, if we have information. But, like, we're not solving the crime, per se. Like, the end result here is not to, like, you know, catch someone. It's to find out what happened. Yeah. Um. So it's not about getting to an end destination. It's just having enough information to go, I think we can do this. Let's end it. Mm-hmm. That's also a fun fact with this game. There is no real ending. It's what? a soft ending. You get to choose. Yeah. When you think you can answer the questions. It's not like, okay, an hour, you time's up. Not, yeah. You can just relax. And... I mean, we could play this for a week if we wanted to. Yeah, for true. Um, you just knocked over a little figure. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you, though? So, I think we could go to the asylum next. I want to see what the asylum has to offer. I feel like the asylum is the thing that, like we wouldn't have been able to get from, like, this article about darts. I feel like that's the next big lead that's, like, potentially really important. But I think out of that, all we get is, what will his friends know? Oh, yeah, he worked here, and it'll probably guide us back. Yeah, that's it. what I'm saying, though. I, I that's I'm exactly saying that I think we should go to the asylum next. Well, let's hail a cart in this fog and go all the way Well, we'll just walk. The fog's so thick. Uh, thick as pea soup over the thing. Okay, here we go. Oh shit! Is it this doozy? is a two-page entry. Oh my gosh! Do you want teamwork? This one, you read half, I read half. I I okay. This is juicy, guys. <sighs> okay. Oh, that's a big entry. All right, so I'm gonna start by turning 
the device back on for close-ups. See if I can get some shots. If this footage doesn't make it in, I'm sorry. But the before I start reading, I do want to point out the secret message is circled. No, you're right. Uh, except this secret message is for a different date. This is from a September 10th, which we don't have that paper. No, 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 no. But what date did the secret message, was it on? Uh, this one was from the latest, from today. And when did this gentleman escape? Uh, last Friday. Last Friday, so three days later, a message returns. Okay, this thing's dead. All right, no close-ups. So basically, what we see, though, is a different message for a friend in a, in a cryptograph, and then what looks to be a uh, some sort of cipher code wheel. Oh, man, we are going to crack a code. I See, we should have, from step one, we should have cracked that code. You could have cracked it without finding the code cracker. We could have cracked it. Let us read many things. A nurse opens the door for us. This way, Dr. Uh, okay. Paratorsis? Oh, no. Names are hard. All right. A nurse opens the door for us. This way, Dr. Paratosis will see you now. We Can follow we call him Dr. Paradactyl, please? Dr. Paradactyl will yes. see you now. We follow the man down several corridors. I'm called Oruki. You're here about the incidents we've had recently. <gasps> yes, we'd like more detail. We're a bit overwhelmed here at the moment. On top of Johnny hasn't showed up the past few days. We're under pressure. Uh, when did you last see him? Friday morning. He was on the night shift when the trouble started. What trouble? One of the detainees, Irving Novak, broke out and another, John Smith, died. What's the link between Johnny and these events? None, as far as I know. Johnny Dermont works in reception. He wasn't there during the breakout and only heard about it when it was discovered. But he was with the body... He was with... He went with the body to St. Barks Morgue. Oh. Why? Dr. Uh, Imhoff asked Harley for someone to help the driver. As Johnny was ending his shift, Harley picked him. Who's Harley? August... Uh, uh, August... Angus Harley. He's in charge of the night shift. Can you show me where the body was found? Of course, if it'll help you. We follow a rook down the main corridor. We soon reach the end of the corridor and find ourselves facing a solid wooden double door. A rook removes the enormous key ring from his belt and opens the door. After our passage, he closes it. These are private cells for our more strongly touched patients. That's a polite way to put it. We're in a corridor placed with windows on the right wall. The left wall contains five identical doors, each with a small opening at head height. Tell us what happened. Chester Char uh, Carley was on watch. His office, well, really the guard room, is at the end of the corridor. He makes his rounds for a half an hour every hour on the hour, starting with these rooms. And then he comes back to his office. Okay, so he makes his round... For half an hour, every hour, on the hour. So from 4 to 4.30, from 5 to 5.30, he makes his rounds. It so was, that puts our dude out of being a guard because his clock was wrong. Maybe? He couldn't be a guard because his well, clock was they, wrong. They said that he was a receptionist. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um... It was when he came back from his two o'clock round that Carly saw something suspicious. He noticed glass on the ground. Okay, so that would be at 2.30 because it was his two o'clock round and he I patrols for half an hour. Round half an hour every hour. Yeah, yeah. He was leaning over to examine when he was knocked out. 20 minutes later, he regained his senses. So around three o'clock, uh, like 10 to three, basically. Uh, his keys had disappeared and two doors were open. Irving Nook's room was empty and John Smith's body was in the other room. It was a mess. He had visibly struggled. And you think Novak killed Smith? I think so. He found a way to leave his room and attack Chester. He must have tried to get Smith to go with him so he couldn't tell what happened. When he didn't want to go, Novak killed him. Ulrich looks at Wiggins nervously. I should bring you to see, uh, what were we calling him? Paradactyl. Paradactyl now. He'll start wondering what's keeping us. 
I'd like to take a look at the rooms first, says Wiggins as he heads to the first door. A rook does not look very comfortable, but silently agrees. Who was in this one? Smith. Wiggins enters the small, spacious, furnished room. A bed mat is standing against the back wall, with the cover rolled into a ball underneath. On the left wall is a small desk and an oak armoire. On the right side, an old set of shelves, a square table, and two chairs sit in the middle of the room, under a gas lamp. Finally, a sink is set in the corner. The body was found near the bed, says a rook from the corridor. I don't see any traces of blood, says Wiggins, as he examines the ground and the bed with a magnifying glass. No, weird, huh? I don't know how he died. There were no, there are no clothes on the shelves. Wiggins opens the armoire. It's empty. He's about to close it when he spots a small leather briefcase in the, uh, in a dark corner. Hmm. It's labeled with the Cunard, uh, Cunard Company, and is closed. Uh, C U N A R D. C U N A R D. Yeah. Wiggins quickly checks its contents. Passports under the name of Rodloff Lip Lipsy Lipsy and Joseph Louis uh Front Fusteski. I can't R- pronounce Rodolfo names. Rodolfo Leopis? Yep. And That's him. Yeah, and That's him. Yep. Yeah, and Joseph Louis uh and I can't pronounce the last name. Uh Joseph Louis must be his um other alibi. And bearer bonds. There's a fortunes in there. Yep. Uh, there's a fortune in there. Look at a scrap of news. Look, so... Oh, this is a quote from him. Quickly checking its contents. And then Wiggins is saying, Passports under the name of Rodolf and Joseph and bearer bonds. There's a fortune in there. Look, a scrap of newspaper. And that's where we have the scrap of newspaper showing up. The friend. So that was his correspondent on the outside. And what is this? Or, and, and this, what is that? I don't know, says Wiggins. It's a pair of wooden rings on which the alphabet is carved. The inner ring pivots on the base of the outer ring. Wiggins then heads to Novak's room. He was Dr. Jackson's patient, says Rowick. The small pieces of furniture can be found within, but whereas Smith's room seemed empty, Novak's room is full of various objects. An easel holding a canvas in the middle of the room, uh, pots of paint covered in, uh, cover the table and the shelves, more canvases and brushes are scattered throughout the room. We almost believed ourselves to be in a bohemian painter's shop. Uh, Wiggins ex- examines the paintings for a few minutes. Look, these paintings all represent the same young lady. There are at least 20 paintings. Wiggins quickly searches the room. He notices a painting decorated with black cloth. It's her. There's writing on the picture. With all my love, Stephanie. There are a few romantic, uh, a few books of romantic poetry. I don't see any clothes. That's no- normal. Norvok was clothed, uh, wore clothing furnished by the hospital. We really need to go see uh, Paradactyl now. Oruk uh, brings us back along several quarters to Dr. Paratok's office. Our meeting with him is short and allows us to learn very little. And that's it. So we learn nothing from the doctor, but we learn much from the visit. So, okay. To be clear... The one who escaped was Norvok. Norvok. His name was Ivine in there. Right? Yeah. I, uh, Arvin, Ivan Norvok? Ivan Norvok was actually... No, Ars- no, no, no. That's what I'm getting at. It wasn't him. Was actually this dude. Nope. That's what I'm getting Wait. at. I, I'm getting at that wasn't him. The other prisoner was. The one who was killed. John Smith? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because they... they, they they find all of the passports and stuff in John Smith's thing, and then they went to Norvok's room. You're right. Norvok was in was the one with all the paintings. That's what I'm trying to say. So yeah, uh, where where is it here? Uh, yeah, Irving, Irving Norvok uh, was the one who escaped. And he's the one that had the contact. No, he was not. John he, Smith had the contact. He had Stephanie. Yes. So. John Smith didn't want to get out of the asylum or had a problem with this. Yeah, the the now we don't know this. This is a, a assumption by the uh, nurse that brought us through here, the Oruk. Uh, Oruk was saying he believes what happened was that um, 
Irving Norvok, the painter. The painter. Who had all these paintings of some woman named Stephanie. Broke the glass. Broke the glass and knocked out the guard and took the keys. Yes. And then in order to make sure that... Um, to make sure that Smith, John Smith... Uh, didn't tell anyone what happened. He wanted John Smith to go with him. and so then when, no one else in that hall. Just the two inmates. When John Smith wouldn't go with him, though, he killed him. Right. In but, his room. But there was no blood. But there was no blood. But John Smith... Um, but John Smith... Went to Sparker's so, hospital. So John Smith didn't want to leave. Because he was trying to hide out from the police. Right. And so that's why he didn't want to leave. And then that's why Norvok had to kill him. And then our dude went to the morgue with this body. Yes. Which I don't know if the body was really dead. That's what I'm thinking. There's no blood. Yeah. It could have been just an elaborate escape ploy. Yeah, but then how would... But, and how he would was he with him. the money? Well, no more importantly, why would he leave? Or maybe he wasn't killed. Maybe he was just knocked out. And then he woke up on the way to the morgue. Maybe. I don't know. There's something else going on there. We need to go check out the morgue. So that is a place. The morgue is on the back. We have a, a correspondent. Yeah, we have the coroner. There's head examiner. Uh, he does autopsies on all bodies. So we could go see him. I feel like that might be valid to find out, find like... at least how he died. Or where, like, if there was any body... It, like, if the body did come in, or if they, he never received John Smith's body, we might find information about that. And here you go. Mistaken identity. You had yeah. your ide identity. Yeah, I, maybe I was onto it from the beginning. Who knows? But, but you just had the wrong suspect. So the, the question now... Is do we stop for now? We've been recording for almost two hours. I'm not sure how much... I should be able to cut this to a lot shorter, but we might want to stop here because I don't feel okay like we're... I'm cutting off now. Yeah, I would like to test the footage, test the audio, maybe upload this as part one, and then we'll try and record part two at a later point, depending on how people like it. If people are like, this is terrible, blah! Guys, then, don't think it's terrible. I really want to play more! Yay! Then, um, I mean, we... We can see what the feedback is regardless. Maybe there's like, oh, we really wish that you were showing more of, you know, of this or something. So let's stop here. Um, maybe while in between, I might take some time to peruse some of the... Um, we'll go over our notes. Some of the no the things. So just a half um, a little recap. Guy got murdered over here. Yeah. We went to the watchmaker near here. Find out that the watches were made in twos by Solomon. Went to talk to Solomon. Solomon told us that we can go visit him, which we haven't done yet. In but a he dark also, club. But he also told us about the mother who we went to saw. Told us that they, she and her uh, son couldn't read, which made us realize in that crazy moment, it wasn't the obituary. It was... The this, photo! It was this dude's face. And then from there... That handlebar mustache, though. It's identifiable. And then from there, we went to his place of business and found out a whole bunch of stuff that I think we already kind of had figured out. Like, that it was that guy that he would, you know. But then Crazy a few... Crazy stuff has happened. But a few more details, like, we didn't realize that he wasn't the guy who escaped. He was actually murdered by the guy who escaped. Right. So he was a casualty while he was trying to be protected by the authorities that are trying to, like, actually catch him. Although we don't actually know what uh, his story is. We don't know what uh, Irving Novak's story is. He Irving maybe... Novak's story is that he actually caused bankruptcy in the Spanish banks. No, no, no. No, that's the other guy. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The, I, we, I was saying the painter. We don't know oh, what the, the painter, painter's yeah. story was. Because the guy he has who a escaped. secret contact. Yeah, well, no, that was... See, again, this is why we need to go over this. Everything is crazy. This guy has a secret contact. We still should find out that secret contact. We should. We should decode that over the next week as well. Um, or a couple days. I don't know how long it'll be between recordings. Knowing so us, it might be a few months. The secret contact, but... the painter slash the killer had the lady, Stephanie. Yes. So, yeah, that this for this information, in case it, like, it was all kind of convoluted and maybe my voice is dying a little bit, so that didn't help either. But... The, no, no, oh, no. <laughs> it's like a face, it's Scooby-Doo. <laughs> uh, so this guy here was in Murder. the asylum as John Smith. 
uh, we found his passport and uh, a passport for another gentleman, which may have been another passport for him or could have been a friend. Uh, yes. Could have been John or could have been Norvok for all what we know. What if they were actually in cahoots and that's why he was we trying don't, to escape? We don't know. But, so just facts. They were working no. together. Sherlock Holmes says not to elaborate, but to speak facts. The things we know are. They're is friends. That, no, we don't. <laughs> We know yes. that th- we know that this guy was in a cell. He was under the name John Smith. He had his passport and bearer bonds in the cell with him. He was actually uh, under the care of a specific doctor that was listed in there. Doctor that- Paradactyl. No, it was a different doctor. Sorry. There was a different doctor that they called out. He was a patient of, so he might be involved. Then there was the painter who was Irving Norvak in an adjacent cell who knocked out the guard. We, we believe, according to the nurse, the nurse thinks he knocked out the guard, stole the keys, and escaped. Maybe the guard is in on it. We don't know. We can figure we it don't, out. We, again, we don't know. The facts are this guy was under the... Tune in, in the, next time. This guy was the under the asylum as John Smith. This guy was the painter, and he had paintings of a woman with the name with love Stephanie on Now, it. the question is, is he an impressionist painting? Is he a realistic it doesn't, painting? It th- doesn't matters it doesn't well maybe it does it doesn't it maybe it does matter if he has a patient for pointillism he's been there a long time john smith escape patient irving Irving. john smith escape patient irving okay tune in next time the tohe and drix tohe and drixie investigation files that's not no (laughs) the tohe and drixie Consulting detective. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in. For now, this is Tolhi signing out. Later, guys. Click, click. Boom. <laughs>